Hey guys, James, Jameson DIY, here with the Toyota Tundra 2005 doing the timing belt. This is a short clip of a lot longer video, series of videos uh, to do the timing belt on this. This video is just going to be the timing belt itself. If you want to see the full teardown and reinstallation of everything, then check out the link for the, uh, the complete timing belt video. Look at the cams again, and we can see the timing mark right here it is, in fact, lined up with the line on the back of the timing cover. And then you can see on this side as well, we have this little indicator right there, as well as one back here, and they line up with this line right here. Before you pull the crankshaft pulley off and the belt and all that, um, what you should do. Once you find the timing marks and get those all lined up, is actually rotate the crank pulley so that the timing mark lines up with the bolt here on this idler pulley. What that'll do is it'll kind of put the timing marks off quite a bit from where we lined them up. So you can see that one's you know past the T here. Uh, this one's going to be past the T. Uh, the reason we want to do that is because I usually do it after I pull the belt off But what will happen is once you pull the belt off is that this one this will want to spring back around Which is okay. You can you could pull the belt off Normally, I'll pull the belt off and then rotate the cam with this bolt Over into this location. It doesn't have to be exact right now because the the marks on the belt will line everything up um, but if you leave it right here, what's going to happen is this thing is going to spring down to about right there. The timing mark here, which will be right there, um, will spring down to somewhere around there. And you don't want that to happen. So whether you do it before or after you pull the belt, you need to keep this in mind. If you have already pulled the belt, you need to get this cam rotated from there to somewhere right about there. Uh, same thing with this one. This one doesn't jump as much, but it'll probably uh, float somewhere around here. Uh, so just move it, you know, right around here to be safe because we don't want this thing springing around. So anyway, that's about what we're looking for. We're looking for that mark lined up with that bolt. Gonna line that up right about there, and we'll line that up right about there. So this will make it easier and that will allow this thing to not spring back and um, uh, once we get the uh, new belt with the new marks we'll see exactly where we need this thing but this is pretty close to where it should be and this will keep the cam in a neutral like a rest position so it's not being forced back from the cam lobes. The service manual says to rotate the, the crank 50 degrees, which points the um, it points the timing mark on the crank pulley to the bolt right here. So if the so when the crank pulley was on, like I showed you, we turned it over clockwise and it pointed the timing mark up to this. So they call that about 50 degrees. Um, we're not really concerned about the actual degrees because we have the marks on the timing belt. Uh, what we want to do is get the marks here lined up with the timing marks on both of the top cams and once we get that done then we will uh, work our way down to the crankshaft and we'll probably have to spin that slightly over to get that mark to line up and then once that's done we'll put the uh, tensioner pulley on and uh, make sure it's all good to go
Okay, down here looking at the crankshaft, uh, what we're looking for is this timing mark right here. It needs to line up with the mark here on the timing belt. For a frame of reference, the key for the crankshaft is right there. Uh, we have a little hole right here, which is not the timing mark. The timing mark is actually right there to the left of the hole. So what we need to do is back the crankshaft off slightly counterclockwise in order to get uh, that mark there lined up with the arrow here on the belt for the crank. So you can see there we have the uh, arrow on the belt lined up with the timing mark there on the crank sprocket. Uh, now we'll go back up top, make sure the belt's aligned still, and then put on the tensioner pulley. All, right, all the marks are lined up, so let's put on our new tensioner pulley. We've got the little washer here on the back and the bolt that slides through like that. The instructions do say to apply some lubricant here. Uh, I would suggest if you're going to put anything here, maybe some anti-seize. Tensioner bolt gets torqued to 25 foot-pounds. Okay, with the tensioner on, double check all your marks. Make sure they're still lined up. I've just done that. All the marks, both cams and the crank are all lined up. So what I like to do at this point is to uh, get all the marks on the cams and stuff lined up to the marks on the timing cover. So uh, you shouldn't ever rotate the engine backwards. That's what everyone will tell you, and that is a good rule of thumb. But we're just going a little bit, so I'm going to go backwards. But someone watching this will say that you shouldn't do that. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. And I just want to kind of hold the belt a little bit just to make sure that everything's going to be okay. And I also want to pay attention to this cam here because this is the one that likes to spring way back here once it gets close to this timing mark. So just be wary of that. Keep your... Uh, Keep your hand on the wrench and just be prepared just in case this swings back. The belt should hold it there. Um, it should hold it where we put it, but just in case, just be mindful. So just hold tension on the belt so that none of the teeth will slip. All right, I've got all my timing marks double checked. Everything is lined up. I'm just holding tension here on the ratchet so that this cam doesn't spring back. It probably won't, like I said, but just wanna be careful. So at this point, what we wanna do is we want to rotate the engine back clockwise, get, it, get the cams over here to more of a neutral position. And in doing so, um, it's gonna tighten up this side of the belt and we want to put all the slack on this side of the belt right here where the tensioner goes. Okay, that's pretty close right here. You can see that the mark is slightly uh, to the right here of our original timing mark. Uh, that's got this side of the belt really tight and it's got most of the slack right here on this side of the belt. There's still a little slack right here and if we need to, we can rotate just this one cam slightly to the left to take that slack out if we need it once we're putting the, putting the uh, tensioner on. Okay, we're ready to put the tensioner on. I'm gonna leave my wrench right there uh, just in case I need to move this slightly uh, clockwise. And I've got my wrench here ready to 
uh, turn this cam counterclockwise if we need to just to make sure there's enough slack on this side of the belt because we want all of the slack to be right here at the tensioner pulley. So let's go ahead and get the tensioner started and we'll move this cam accordingly as we need to. Okay, I've got the bolts threaded in by hand as far as I can go. What I wanna do now is rotate this uh, passenger side cam uh, just a little bit counterclockwise to get the rest of the slack here uh, on this side by the tensioner. So I'm just going to slightly rotate it back and then I'm going to go up top and check and make sure it's tight on the other side. Okay, looking at it from up here, I've got pretty much all the slack out of this side. That's pretty tight. That's uh, pretty tight. It could be a little bit tighter. But you can see pretty much all the slack is right there where we want it to be. So once you have all the slack out of every other side of the belt, you have pretty much everything right here, then we can go ahead and tighten those tensioner bolts. And just like we loosened them, we want to tighten them alternating from one to the other. The tensioner gets torqued to 19 foot-pounds if you can get a torque wrench in there. Alright guys, sorry my audio cut out there for some reason. So at this point we're just going to verify that all the timing marks line up. So we can see right there that the mark on the crankshaft sprocket does in fact line up with the mark on the belt. So let's move up to the cams. So you can see the arrow there does match up with the mark on the back of the pulley. And here as well, everything's lined up. At this point, I think I'm just checking the belt tension just to make sure everything feels tight. Um, it's going to be tighter on one side than it is on the other, just kind of the way things roll. Um, but for sure, for sure, we want to make sure all the marks are lined up. Once we're 100% sure that all the marks are lined up, then we can pull the pin out of the uh, timing belt tensioner. Alright guys, tensioner's on, the pin has been pulled. Uh, let's take a look at our timing marks. I've taken the liberty of just loosely installing the lower timing cover along with the harmonic balancer just so you can get an idea that everything is in fact lined up. So once you put the, uh, once you put the harmonic balancer back on, you've, uh, you can see that the mark here lines up with the zero. We've got the uh, cam here, the line on the belt lines up with the mark here on the uh, cam sprocket as well as the timing mark back here on the back. Looking at this cam, same thing, we have the mark there, we have the line and then the mark right back there on the timing cover. Alright guys, that wraps it up. Timing belt is done. It's installed. Uh, like I said, if you want to see the full teardown and reinstall uh, from start to finish, uh, check out the link for that video, for those two videos. Uh, otherwise, uh, hopefully this helped a little bit. Thanks for watching.